love trying out new racing wheels here on the channel and today we've got a really, really cool one. This is the Moza R9 with Moza's new circular steering wheel, their brand new pedals and a really, really cool heads up display. In today's video, we're gonna be trying out this racing wheel on Forza Horizon 5, but in the future, we're gonna jump into F1, iRacing and so on. So if you wanna see any of those videos, make sure you subscribe. As always, mega thank you to Moza for sending out this racing wheel and sponsoring today's video. If you wanna check out any of the products that I'm using today from the racing wheel base to the dash to the pedals or so on, I'm gonna include links for everything in the description down below, so go and check it out. Before we jump into Forza Horizon 5 though, let's rewind the clocks a little bit because earlier I did an unboxing of this racing wheel and set it up here on my racing wheel. So here's what all of that looks like. In today's video, we've got the Moza R9 direct drive wheelbase to check out some pedals, including a clutch pedal and this circular racing wheel. However, in a couple of weeks, we're gonna check out this. This is the brand new Moza GS racing wheel. It's a really cool formula style racing wheel where every single switch on this thing actually moves and actually does something. It's got really cool shift lights up on the top. It's got forged carbon fiber shift paddles. It looks really awesome. It feels really awesome. I can't wait to give this a go in the future. Subscribe if you want to see that. Let's start our unboxing with this, the Moza R9 wheelbase itself. This is basically the hub that everything else attaches to. Moza actually offers it in two colors, black and white. I've got the black one here today. Let's jump into this. I am so excited. So for those of you who don't know, Moza is one of the brand new sim racing companies out there and they are making a big splash in the water of sim racing gear. As soon as we open up the box, we've got a power cord and our USB. That's how you connect it to power and to the computer itself. Under all of the padding, there is the base. We've got a big old power brick and then this plugs into the racing wheel itself. This is how it gets power. And then I would usually say this big guy, but this, I mean, s small guy is the base. Moza does actually make like a desk clamp for this wheel as well. I know not everybody has their own racing rig, but if you want to set it up on your desk, you can. On the back of the actual base, we've got our dash, we've got an e-stop button, the USB, and the DC power, that is all. On the bottom, we've got the four screws that we need to bolt into our racing rig. And then on the front, we've just got our quick release attachment. After that, I feel like we should jump into this, the CS steering wheel by Moza as well. Pull this guy out, lovely packaging, thank you. On this sheet is about uh, 420 stickers that you can attach to the wheel, basically to map whatever buttons you want. Say for example, you're playing a game like Formula One, for example, and you wanna open up your ERS, well, you can stick a sticker on your ERS button that you choose to map it to so you know exactly what button you've got to click, which is really nice. Love to see it. Up at the top of the wheel, we've got all of the shift lights, which look really, really nice. I'm excited to check those out. On the back, you've got your quick release attachment so you can get this wheel attached to the base super quickly. And then you've got these forged carbon fiber shift paddles with a very satisfying click. That's nice. That's actually a really nice size wheel. It's a proper like thickness as well, which is always really important. Really like that, we'll give it a go. And last but not least, let's jump into the SRP racing pedals that Moza offers. And they actually do this really nicely. Say for example, you have no interest in driving with a clutch pedal. Well, Moza doesn't actually force you to buy it they actually sell that separately. What that means is you don't need to waste money and buy three pedals when all you're gonna use is two, so that's nice to see. So let's open up these. As you would expect for sim racing pedals, these pedals are load cell pedals. You can actually press down on them with a force of 75 kilograms, which is insane. That's like as much as, that's basically me standing on the pedals. Anyways, once you've got it all open, you've got a base for all of the pedals to attach to, and all of them are customizable. So if you want your throttle pedal first, Further over to the right, for example, you can do that. Or if you want your pedals closer together for whatever reason, you can also do that with this. You've got different springs in here so you can customize the pedal feeling even more, which is always nice. So now that we've got everything opened up, let's go set this up on my racing wheel and then we'll jump into Forza Horizon 5 
and we can talk a little bit more about this stuff. So here's a quick look at how I actually set this entire wheel up. Basically, I started off with the wheelbase. It's four bolts that hold it in. Obviously, I'm setting it up on my wheel rig, but like I said, you can also mount this to your desk, which is really, really nice as well. Anyways, it takes literally five minutes to get the base on. It's four bolts, and then you just click the steering wheel in because it's a quick release. It takes no time at all. The pedals are obviously a little bit more complicated because you need to get like the spacing right, figure out if they're the right distance away from you and all sorts of stuff like that. But once we got them placed where we want them to be, I got the base plate in so it looks really nice and that's all it is. And now that we've got the racing wheel set up, we can jump into Forza Horizon 5 and give this all a go. And I can tell you why I absolutely love this racing wheel because I've actually been using it for a little while. This, this isn't actually my first impressions, but let's jump into it and jump into Forza Horizon 5 with two cars that I haven't shown off just yet. So let's start things off with this, the Mercedes E63 AMG. Fun fact, up until last month, the only way to unlock this car was from wheel spins, so it was super, super rare. What's really, really cool about this AMG though is in the customization, you've actually got some really cool parts from Brabus. You can swap the entire front bumper to a Brabus front bumper. It changes out the boring plastics to carbon fiber. On the rear wing, you've got the AMG standard rear little lip there. You can swap it for a Brabus rear lip. And last but not least, our rear bumper isn't actually a rear bumper. It's a Brabus full on rear end. It swaps over all of the trunk parts and all of the logos from Mercedes to Brabus parts. So this is actually called the Brabus 800. So I think we should emulate that and make a Brabus E63 with 800 horsepower. And just like that, we've got 850 horsepower in our big bad AMG. Let's just make sure the thing stops properly, get some better brakes on it. I like my AMG. Actually, you know what? Maybe we should give this a go on our quarter mile and see what it can do. This is a big, heavy AMG. What is it actually gonna do? I would be happy with like a 10, maybe 10.5 second quarter mile. It gets some nice grip off the line, but it's a little bit, a little bit sluggish. I think that was mid to low tens. Let's see. A 10.2 second quarter mile, that's not bad actually. For a purest realistic build, a 10.2 seconds actually seems pretty realistic for this thing. I'll take that. No joke, these are actually some of my favorite cars to actually make. Not every car has to be a leaderboard running car and breaking and trying to beat world records and things like that. I really, really like cars that are more realistic based. Come on, big bad AMG. Oh, our rain light's not on and it doesn't activate from our brakes. Maybe we need to drive in the rain, then maybe it'll come on. So since I've been playing for the past week or so using this racing wheel, let me tell you some of my favorite parts about this racing wheel. And number one has gotta be the heads up display. It's just, it's just so cool. I love how in depth it is. It shows everything on one screen from your gears to your revs, to your speed, to what place you're in how many laps there are in the race and so on. Side note, this heads up display actually works for a whole bunch of different games, which is actually really nice. Like I said, when we jump into the iRacings, the F1s and stuff, that's when that heads up display will make a big, big difference. Not to mention, it's also got a whole bunch of like customizable features. You can change the entire layout of it. It's pretty cool. As for the AMG though, boy, this is actually way better than I expected. Like I said, for a realistic build, the horsepower is actually really usable considering I didn't make the tires any wider. All I did to make this thing go around the corners better was get that weight reduction, get the upgraded suspension and the anti-roll bars and it just... It's way nicer to drive than I thought it would be. Casually sliding my 800 horsepower Brabus through the corners. All right, I'm gonna go and make a Brabus drift car because 
I like chaos. All we're gonna do to make this thing into a drift car is swap our suspension from race suspension over to drift suspension. For our tires, I'm gonna swap on some drag racing tires. I know a lot of people out there are always like, Nick, why do you swap on drag tires onto your all wheel drive drift builds? I don't know if it's just me, but I find drag tires to give you some really nice acceleration out of the corners while also reducing like the lateral grip in the corner. Long story short, I just really like drag tires for all wheel drive drift cars and this is one of them. So I've made my way over to this drift zone here, the hillside drift zone. Let's see if I can get through here in one piece. Now, keep in mind I'm on a racing wheel, so I'm not gonna get as many points as I usually do. I think there's gonna be a lot of abuse towards the handbrake for this. Let's see, keep it going. Wow, this thing's actually so, this thing is unbelievably grippy. It doesn't wanna slide, it kind of just understeers more, more accurately. I'm trying to gun it as much as I can, but it's just, it's not sliding. You know, maybe I'll just go and do some free roam drifting and yeah. Anyways, I can tell you some of my other favorite things about this racing wheel, like on the rim itself, it's actually got these grips on the back of it. They're very, very subtle, but there's something that I really like about them. Not to mention on the topic of the actual rim itself, this wheel's got really, really cool shift lights built into it and they're all customizable. So if I go and redline my car, for example, you can see it goes blue, green, and then red. You can actually customize those to be any color that you want, and you can even change the placement of them. So if you want your shift lights to be like green, 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 and then flash red right at the end, you can do that, which is really cool. Actually, on the topic of customization, if you jump into that same Moza software that you can just download when you get this wheel, you can actually choose what you want your pedals to feel like and like the linearity of them. Is that a word? But basically you can change whether you want your pedals to be like linear as you're pressing them down, or if you want them to be like a curve, or if you want them to be an S curve. Basically, it just gives you a whole bunch of freedom when you're actually customizing the feeling of your pedals, which is really cool. As for the AMG though, boy, it's a big, heavy thing, even with full weight reduction, and it just, it doesn't really want to slide the way I wanted it to. Like, it's good, but it's a handful and a half, that's for sure. Like, jeez, that's some angle there. That's basically a spin but we can keep on going, keep the power on. There's the understeer. Can I go for a very stylish 360 spin? Spin big AMG. Shift. It's a bit of a jank 360, but I'll take it. What a beastly car. Anyways, why don't we jump into that other AMG, the AMG GT. Let's give it a go. Every time I get this thing into a Forza game, I always turn this AMG into a track racing car. So that means front splitter, big ol' rear wing. I really wish it was like about a foot taller, but big ol' rear wing. Maybe we should go full slick tires for this thing. Let's go proper track day boy. And then let's get say 700 horsepower into this. I think that'd be a nice place for it, 723. Again, not an OP build, a realistic build. Let's give this thing a little bit of a test drive. So 725 horsepower, all to the rear wheels. Let's send it through some of these and then we can start up a race and see how good this thing actually is in this game. All right, AMG, let's see what you've got. Rev it on up, get the shift lights going. I know I might explode the engine, but I mean, it. It looks good. So I kind of over rev my car every time. What can I say? Also, not gonna lie, but if I miss a shift with this setup, there is no excuse because I've got the shift lights on the wheel. I've got the shift lights on the heads up display and I've got the game itself all telling me when I need to shift. So if I miss a shift, I will, um, Blame it on Nathan. I love how we've got the old Mercedes SLS up in front of us. Then we've got me in my AMG GT and there is the AMG GTR. We've got them all. All we're missing is the black series out here. Anyways, go, 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 send it. 
I was about to say SLS, AMG, please, come on. Anyways, the last thing I'm gonna say about the Moza R9 racing wheel is just what it feels like to play. And I know Forza Horizon sometimes gets some flack for not feeling the best on a racing wheel. I would say this is probably the best experience I've had with it so far, if I'm honest. The cars feel like they've got some nice weight behind them. You're able to turn into the corner and actually get some nice feedback coming to you. And most importantly, it's just fun to play. I know you're not gonna be setting world records necessarily with the steering wheel, but it's fun. And I think that's what's nice about this. It's just a change of pace. It spices things up a little bit. And that's why I love checking these out. More importantly, I can send it on the AI up the inside and feel like a racing hero when I smoke up the rears coming out the corner. Anyways, rip the handbrake a little bit. Give them a little bit of sideways. That's not side. Uh oh. Mm. Gu gu guys. Guys. That, though, is where we're going to wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me, checking out the brand new Moza R9 sim racing wheel. Like I said, in the future, we're definitely going to be doing some proper sim racing with this. Thanks again to Moza for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out the links to anything that I used in today's video, I'll include them all in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon with some more Forza Horizon 5. I'll see you then. Bye.